Hey everyone, Dana here. I'm an American who lives in Germany. In this video, joined by my German husband, Stefan, and my Italian friend, Carmen, who also lives in Germany, we're gonna be talking punctuality. What does it mean to us to be on time somewhere? What does it mean to be late? What are the stereotypes about where we're from? Perhaps you already know of some stereotypes about punctuality where you're from. Feel free to leave them down in the comments. It would be really interesting to hear what you think on this topic as well. This video today has been made in collaboration with the Petra Kelly Stiftung, which is where Carmen works. And we'll get to more on that in a little bit also including the beef that Carmen has with bolognese in Germany. Hearing Germans talk about bolognese all the time because apparently that's not what it's called, but now it's time to talk about punctuality. Yeah, clearly I'm an American because I already made two puns, beef and time, yeah. If you have an appointment, mm -hmm. what do you consider being quote unquote on time. Like a business appointment, 10 to 5 minutes I'm there before the appointment starts. Latest really like a minute before the appointment starts. On time is like being there two minutes before the agreed upon time to being there at the agreed upon time to being there like three minutes after the agreed upon time. If we are meeting, say, for example, at three, uh, I would be consider myself on time if I'm there at three sharp or at five past three because it's kind of like the fashionably late five minutes uh, something is always going to happen like the train is not on time or you get you go through a route with more traffic lights you never know but I think it also depends on the kind of meeting like if it's a personal one with friends it's fine, the five minutes and so on. If it's a work thing, I might arrive on time, uh, meaning like 10 to five minutes earlier, because I want to be like there when the people need me. But on the other hand, I would never be like too early there. Like 50 minutes is not nice, because you never know, people might have stuff earlier to do and it's not uh, nice if you're already there and they have to deal with you. With friends I would say on time like really if it's at four I would like to be there at four. I don't have to be there five minutes early. When you meet with friends uh, you meet because you want generally I think you want to spend time together so the most important thing is that eventually you get there. <laughs> but if it's also, if it's a business appointment and I have to go somewhere, so it's not in the same building or anywhere, I have to go there. I'm probably at the building 30 to 20 minutes before the appointment is. And then I just walk around outside or sit in the car or sit on a bench and just wait until it's like five minutes before the appointment. Yeah regardless of what kind of an appointment it is, mm -hmm. generally speaking, if you have an appointment set for, say, 5 p.m., mm -hmm. what time would it feel good for you to arrive? A minute, two minutes before five. Yeah, at five, sharp. Three or four minutes before. For you, is being on time the same as being punctual? This is kind of an existential question. Well, that's difficult. Yeah, in general I would say yes. To me, somehow being punctual means being there at the exact time, whereas for me, I interpret being on time as being like maybe a few minutes early or even like five to six minutes late. Being five or six minutes late is still like on time to me, but punctual means being there at the exact time you agreed upon. It depends not from what my perspective, but from the perspective of the people the, or the person I'm meeting. If I'm on time, it's more a objective thing. Like, okay, I'm, I'm there at the time we um, organized, we, we chose. But if the person is somehow pissed that I'm uh, not punctual, then it's 
It depends from their perspective, basically. Maybe that's just my weird <laughs> definition. Let me know down in the comments what you think. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being not important at all and 10 being very important, how important to you is being somewhere at the exact time you said you would be there? 10. 7? 8.5 to 9. At what point would you consider yourself to be quote-unquote running late? After the five fashionably minutes, I would say. Like, if I'm already 10 minutes late, then yeah, I'm late. Five minutes after the appointment. If I'm seven minutes after the agreed-upon time then I'm running late. As far as running late goes, at what point would it start to make you feel anxious? 20 minutes? Uh, like 20 minutes is already a lot for me. If I'm like seven minutes late, that makes me feel anxious. If I'm even like one or two minutes late to a work meeting, for that I would start to feel anxious. And if it's like an interview, no, 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 I need to be there beforehand, on time. I can't be running late at all or else I would start to feel anxious. If there's an appointment and I'm at work and we have like meetings online where different people call in into a conference room, and I'm the leader of the conference and I start the conference like a minute after the appointment, I'm already nervous and I apologize that I started it a minute late. Even though I apologize and it's not like a life-threatening appointment that I had to be at, but it just gives me that feeling as if this was the most important meeting of my life. I would like to be a little bit more relaxed when it comes to punctuality. Maybe a little bit longer story to explain how I feel. We went to Ireland and um, you know on the hotel web pages where you can say I will be arriving at that and that time. So it was a bed and breakfast hotel. I said okay we would be there at 8 p.m. But because the scenery was so beautiful and the drive took a little longer, half an hour before we said we would be at the hotel, I saw the GPS saying it will take another hour. And at that exact moment, I was already nervous. So I was nervous not being on time half an hour before the actual appointment. And I also called the bed and breakfast and told them that we were late. And they said, yeah, it's totally fine. If you're meeting a friend and you're running late, how late would you have to be running before you decide to send a text message letting them know? The 10 minutes I said before. I think if I know I'm gonna be six minutes late, then I would send a text message. If I'm just gonna be like four or five minutes late and it's a friend, then I probably wouldn't text them. If I know I'm running late and I'm not there at 4 p.m. and I'm there at maybe not 4 1 but if I know I'm running five minutes late maybe maybe the five minutes late I would tell them hey I'm running five minutes late. In, in Italy people usually consider me being more German <laughs> in the sense that I, I, I like to be almost always on time even though maybe I'm not uh, the first person arriving. Carmen, mm -hmm. when you and I first met, we met up for coffee at a cafe mm -hmm. and that was almost a year ago. One year anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> I honestly cannot remember who got to the cafe first. I think it was me, but I can't mm -hmm. remember. Yeah, I actually remember very vividly because I've been a fan of this channel for a long time. So I really wanted to be on time. So I was as uh, sharp as a Swiss clock, as we say in Italy. <laughs> but you already were sitting in the cafe. So I guess you arrived five minutes early. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I linked up with Carmen mm -hmm. through her podcast series, Di Farbe der Nation, that she does mm -hmm. together with Zara, where they have have fun, funny, but also often quite deep and mm. always really fascinating conversations about lots of different things, where and what exactly is home, mm -hmm. um, cultural differences, everyday racism, exactly, and stuff like that. with the purpose of stimulating, I would 
discussion mm -hmm. and also understanding, yeah? yeah. Uh, like understanding the misunderstandings that might come <laughs> yes. up. Speaking of understanding, yes. <laughs> I understand that you have a thing with bolognese. What's up with the bolognese in Germany? I think this is like a pet peeve of yours, kind it's, of. It's the problem is the name, basically. So uh, the gist of that episode with Sara was that she was telling me um, stereotypes about Italy and Italians, uh, and I was reacting to them. One of the stereotypes was that the Italian cuisine is very good. I think personally that the Italian cuisine is good because it's so diverse. Every region, every province has, has its own recipe. I noticed that the more I was talking about it, the more I got angry, mostly at the oversimplification that the Italian cuisine usually goes through outside of Italy. Spaghetti with meatballs, which doesn't even exist. Yes. Pizza, <laughs> which exists, but it's but this reduction of just it's pizza and spaghetti. Yes. Right? And the bolognese sauce, it's very, it's a good example of that because it doesn't exist. It has another name in Italy, it's called ragù. Uh, ragù, it's not only done only in Bologna. Bolognese, this word comes from Bologna. Bologna. The it's, it's, it's the Italian adjective for uh, someone or something from Bologna. Got it. Like a, a citizen of Bologna would be a Bolognese. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay. So. so not a sauce. <laughs> um, ragu is a sauce based on mincemeat, tomato sauce, uh, and vegetables like, I don't know, onions and carrots. But it's done differently in every region or province uh, with like different type of meat, different type of vegetables, cut it in different ways. So for me, it's ridiculous to call it bolognese because it's you know, it's it's different. One thing I, that we talked about before filming was mm -hmm. that this might kind of be like in the US. There's different kinds of barbecue mm -hmm. all over uh, the US, especially in the South. And if people outside of America suddenly started calling all barbecue, like Texas barbecue, yeah. I think people in other parts of the South might not like that too much. And while we're on the subject, where's the best barbecue in America? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> anyway, so the podcast is in German. Again, the series is called Die Farbe der Nation. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of pique your interest a little bit, a few of the episodes include, for example, Die Folge über Deutschland mit und Pünktlichkeit. Yeah. Die Folge, in der Sara nicht mehr in den Zoo gehen kann. Die Folge, wo wir mit dem Sachsen bashing aufhören. Some episodes about some funny things, but also mm. about more serious topics as well. Yeah, I guess our style is to not take us, ourselves too seriously in order to um, have a, a normal, quiet conversation about important topics and deepen the understanding of each other. I have learned so much listening to this podcast and I cannot recommend it enough. If you enjoy the Wanted Adventure videos, if you find these topics interesting, then I can I definitely recommend mm -hmm. checking out the podcast series Die Farbe der Nation. You can find it wherever you can find podcasts yeah. by searching for what? For Petra Kelly Stiftung. Or also you can find them on Instagram. Yes. So I will put a link down in the description box mm -hmm. below so yes. there's no trouble to find them. What stereotypes would you say there are about Germans and punctuality. I think there's a stereotype that Germans seem to be punctual, like we are a punctual country. As an Italian, we have uh, general stereotypes uh, um, about Germany, but also Switzerland, being sharp on time like a Swiss clock. I think we have the stereotypes of German people um, always being on time, but also demanding you to be on time as well, like they're pissed if you're not on time. What stereotypes would you say there are about Italians and punctuality? Okay, I think it is the opposite. In general, I heard the stereotype of the southern European countries like Greece, Italy, uh, Spain of being not as punctual. That in combination with the famous in Spain siesta, that it's just too warm to do anything and just slower and 
everyone is okay with that. The stereotype I've heard is that Italians aren't really <laughs> so concerned with being punctual. Time is a little bit more flexible. Like if you say you're gonna be somewhere, you're gonna meet at 6 p.m., it's okay if you get there at 6.20 or 6.30. Generally speaking, I would say the more south you go, the more uh, um, time constraints are loosened up. For example, also with in Italy, um, generally speaking, people from the south are less punctual than people from the north. Of course, it's all, can I swear, a bit like bullshit, because every person is different. Uh, like, for example, I have a good friend of mine whose family is from the north, uh, uh, doesn't have even part of the family like myself from the south, and is always like half an hour late. What stereotypes would you say there are about Americans and punctuality? That is extremely funny because I have absolutely none. I have no idea how Americans are supposed to be on the time being punctual spectrum. I have never heard a stereotype about Americans and punctuality. I don't know any stereotypes about Americans and punctuality. Please let me know down in the comments if you have ever heard of any punctuality stereotypes about the US. People in Germany often mm -hmm. complain about the Deutsche Bahn <laughs> not being punctual. Any yes. thoughts on this? Let me put this this way. Um, you know, the famous uh, fast train between Munich and Berlin. I got it the first time a couple of weeks after it was launched and my train had 166 minutes delay. I think they're completely right to complain because there's a lot of delays. Sometimes it's unreasonable, maybe it's a five minute delay, but a lot of times there's a big delay. When I first moved to Germany, I didn't really have that much experience using the German trains like the Deutsche Bahn. I just used the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn and stuff like that. When I heard Germans complaining about the punctuality of the like longer journey trains in Germany. Because of the stereotype of Germans being punctual, I didn't really take their complaints seriously. I just thought they were probably exaggerating because, you know, the stereotype that Germans are so obsessed with being punctual. I thought they were complaining about trains being one minute late or something. We were saying before about the stereotypes on the Deutsche Bahn always being punctual. It's not true anymore. They have every right to, to complain. I mean, it's a service that is not being given properly. Yeah, absolutely. Now that I've had more experience using the long distance trains in Germany, I complain about it too now. It's like a joke that when winter comes that there are so many trains that stop working what they were not prepared for winter because it just comes every year. I don't think it's perfect, but I'm still grateful that it's there. When I was living in the US before I had moved to Germany, I think I just sort of thought that politeness mm. just was. Something was either polite or impolite just because that's just how it was mm -hmm. but you know you can see from this video that even with something like punctuality that's not the case it's not a static thing mm. what is polite in one country or in one culture might be impolite in another and vice versa exactly in one of the latest episodes of the podcast i think it was the 48th we interviewed a german woman who had lived for five years in kenya she was telling us that she realized that um there is no right or wrong just different when it comes to culture she learned that being a sharp on time when invited to a friend's house, for example, was considered super rude because you weren't giving enough time to the host uh, to organize everything. That's been basically a factor of stress, which blew my mind completely because I've always heard the justification for being on time was to be because you are polite if you are on time. Yeah. In this case, you were being rude be yeah. on time. Yeah, it's almost is... hard to fathom. Yes. Yeah, like I was trying to be polite, but in a different culture that yeah. could be rude. That's so interesting. And I think it's important to 
keep these things in mind just in general, but also, for example, when traveling to other places mm -hmm. and when working with people that are from maybe other cultures or other countries, like, yeah, to just keep this in mind that things yeah. could be different, what's rude and what is polite. Yeah, it's been valued differently and maybe just ask what's being on time, what doesn't mean punctuality for you. So, so our, our question, question for, for you, you is, is... What are your answers to these questions? What does being on time mean to you? How late is too late? Please let us know in the comments below. A huge thank you so much to the Petra Kelly Stiftung for collaborating with me on this video today. A really big thanks to my friend Carmen for joining me in front of the camera to talk about this topic. I hope that you had a lot of fun watching this video. Don't forget to check out the podcast series Die Farbe der Nation. You can find it by searching for the Petra Kelly Stiftung wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't miss out on this awesome German language podcast. Until, Until next time. time. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.